Hey guys, Chris here from ASM Scholarships. This is the video I wish I knew about 15 years ago when doing this scholarship process myself. If I had this information, it'd be much, much easier to get a scholarship to a big school. So I wanna share this information with you so you know what to do every single year leading up to your scholarship recruitment, to making sure you don't make mistakes, but most importantly, doing the right things along the way. So many athletes and parents ask us, what do I need to be doing? What game plan should I be following? Because most of you guys just don't know, and that's okay because this is a new process to you, but I wanna share with you on this information behind me, give you an idea of all the things you should be doing every single year so you don't miss out. So let's get straight into it. So what we have here is a board uh, from every uh, age group going up to say 18, 19 years old, which is kind of like the last years to be doing this. Uh, you can go beyond that to 20, 21, but after 21 years old, it definitely becomes much, much harder. So we want to focus on the prime ages today. Um, and if you're older than say 18, 19, all you're going to do is just shift this board to the right. So you still can get there, but you're going to do what you say do at 14, 15, maybe at 17, 18. So if that makes sense, good. If not, comment and I'll help you guys out. So ideally the prime age is 12 years old, right? The 12 years old, People like Stan, uh, sorry, Tiger Woods went to Stanford. He was starting that process then. Michael Jordan was starting the process then. He went to North Carolina. So if you're young, you're 12 years old, 13 years old, you're really going to have the maximum scholarships available because you're starting so far out. Coaches haven't given all their scholarships away yet. But they are starting to look at players at the ages of 12 and 13. Actually, if you go on our YouTube channel and go on our uh, coach interviews, You'll see uh, George University even saying on the phone they look at athletes from 12 to 13 years old. And what they're doing from say 12 to 15 years old is looking at your sport results, looking at what tournaments you're playing in. They want to see progression, right? And that's what you see here from the green line. So we talk about high sport level, low sport level. So they want to see you guys going up in a nice fashion of level. You're, you're improving every single year. But not just like you know, if you're a tennis player, golfer, practicing, or soccer, working on your skills, they want to see results. So we want to see a nice result schedule going up every single year. You're playing in more events, different events. The standard events is getting higher. So you might start playing in like you know lower leagues or lower tournaments. But as you're getting older, that's improving, getting really, really high. If we set this benchmark, say like a national level, international standards, so you're qualifying for the biggest events in your sport, that's the top. And at the bottom, you're playing like club level, school level, that's the lower. You want, to, you want to be playing like national events by the time you're getting into 14, 15, 16 years old. Because if you do that, if you improve every year and you're adding about 5 to 10 really good tournaments a year from 12 years old, by the time you get to 16, when you see this X, that's where I expect you to commit to a program. So you'll verbally commit to a program at 16 if you have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 years of really good results. Now the other factor that goes into this recruitment process is your grades. So you see here in the blue lines, we have the GPA rankings. So 2.0 being like a D grade, uh, 2.5 being a C, that's kind of the minimum we want you to have. 3.0 being a B, that's very good. And then a 4.0, which being an A. So I've used here the American grade system, 4.0 being the highest. I know in some countries it's completely different. So I've also done the A, B, C, D, which is kind of standard all around the world. So if you have, by say 16 years old, a high sports level, maybe not the very, very top, but you're playing in national events, you're playing a few international events, you're getting recognition for that, and you have say 3.5, 3.8, you're gonna be close to what we call a full ride scholarship, right? You see here the full ride, uh, the high scholarship, low scholarship, you should be committing at that age. And as long as you're in your college marketing properly and you've got the awareness, you're gonna be committing at 16 if you started this process early. You'll see here, I've put in uh, uh, six, six and six, three and six, one and six being the ages. So the more blocks you get, you get a point. So 1.2, point, point, three point. So you have six out of six, you're gonna be a full ride, potentially, because you've, you've done everything year on year. If you have one of the six, so you start at say 16 or 17, you're only gonna have one segment of that previous results, meaning you're probably gonna be a low scholarship recruit, unless you've done this prior. So if you're 15 or 17 years old watching this, let's focus on the older kids watching this, if you're 17 or 16 and you didn't do anything prior, like your grades are weak, your sport results are weak, you're only gonna really have one or two years of development, which means you're gonna be the lower end of the scholarship spectrum. So you might be, say, if you're two out of six, 
you're going to be between a 10 and 50 percent so maybe 30 percent 25 percent so that's going to be harder for you to get that full ride scholarship that all you guys want so it's still possible to get out here if you're 17 18 years old but if you didn't do all the things prior, if you didn't get the sport results high, if your grades are low, you're gonna be more down this section here, right? So you're gonna be like a low scholarship to a, to a big division one program. Now, how you can then still get a high scholarship is based off uh, different schools. So if you go to a junior college, the standards are gonna change a bit, right? So are the NIA standards. So that will give you the chance to get a better scholarship and then you can transfer two years later to a division one program. Also, when you're following this timeline, especially when you get to 15, 17 years old, you wanna be doing your SAT and clearinghouse in this age range here. Even if this is going well and you verbally commit at 16 and you still haven't done the SAT and clearinghouse yet, the verbal commitment will be contingent on passing the SATs and, and passing the clearinghouse. But we wouldn't expect you to take the SAT at 12 or 14 years old because you, you probably don't know all the right education level to, to pass that yet. So definitely 16, 17, get those in. Now, if you're 17 and you basically haven't done any of this and you're 17 to 18, you're in the danger zone. The reason why I call it the danger zone is because you are getting really late to this process and a lot of scholarships have already gone. So you have a couple of options here, two options. One, you lower the standard school you're trying to get to. So instead of going from like the Stanford's, the Harvard's, go to a junior college, go to an NIA program. There's still really good programs there, but they're easier to get into because not all the top athletes are trying to go to them. So you could do that for one, two years, then transfer, or you just simply increase the line. So you go 20, 21 years old. So that gives you a couple more blocks to build up your percentage chances of getting more results of building your academics up. But that's a choice you're gonna to have to make. Now, if you do decide to take a one year gap year, you're, you're going to have to make sure you fill it up with results. Because if you don't, you look, there's no benefit. There's no lines can go up. Your sport level won't go up. If it stays the same, you might as well just go to a junior college or NAI program. So to summarize this, the prime age is 12 years old to 13. You're gonna get those sport results every year, five to 10 really good events every single year. Make sure your GPA is going up. So make sure you're not staying on a 2.0. You're working towards a 2.5 plus. That's gonna help with the scholarship level. Uh, and make sure you get your SAT and clearinghouse done in this age range. So if you can do that early, you'll commit early. If you start later at 14, 15, you might commit more in a danger zone. It's still, it's still loads of athletes get committed in the danger zone. So it's just more likely to happen if you start at 16, you haven't got your stuff sorted out, you're gonna probably start there. It's gonna get a bit more risky, but it's still doable. But if you don't wanna take risks and you're young watching this, follow this progression, follow the progression of improving your results, getting your grades up, right? Getting more years ticked off. It's gonna increase your percentage chances of getting a higher scholarship. So again, grades and sport results are key in this process, but doing it every year, not, not doing it for one year, and getting like really good results at 12 years old, taking a two year gap, doing nothing, and then starting again. That's not gonna show consistency. You wanna see a consistent growth on your results and your academics. Also, what's really key is if you're younger than 15, in this age range here, do your research. So do research in this section here, because what you wanna start doing is identifying schools that you want to go to. So if you want to go to like UCLA, Stanford, Florida State, all these big sports schools and academic schools, you can start looking academically what is required on their websites to qualify for that school. So you know what school subjects you should be taking, what kind of grade point averages you should be getting to qualify for those schools. Again, if you're older, if you're 16, 17, you can do the same thing, but some of the schools you might pick have already given out scholarships. So then also look at other options, look at Division II options, look at NAI options, right? Junior college options. So you can get a gauge of what the, the standard is. Maybe when you do your research, even at 12 or 13, or at 15, 16 onwards, and you look at Stanford, and you see it's very academically you know, high to get in, and you're not academically a student that likes studying, maybe you need to change your, your target and not go for Stanford, go for a different school. Because then you've got different goals to work towards. But if you're 12, 13, your school isn't good, but you still want to go to Stanford, Harvard, you know what you have to work on. You know you have to work on your grades, get an extra tutor, do extra homework, right? You got to do what it takes to qualify. You can't just hope the coach will take you if you're a, a 2.0 and you've got low sport results. So the other thing you can do, apart from the grades, is look at the, the sporting requirements. So we look at Stanford, we look at UC, UCLA, you can look at the roster of the athletes on those programs and look at what they did. 
Now a good tip here is try to find athletes on their roster that are from countries near you or from the American states near you. So I go on Stanford, I go on UCLA or USC and I find an athlete from California and I'm from California, I can see what events they play and what were they doing at 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 years old? What events are they playing in? And then I can go play in the same events and try to beat those results of those athletes because that's gonna show a nice progression pathway of why you're better, along with the grades and give you a high scholarship, okay? If you're from England and they've got a player there who isn't British, but they're from France or they're from Spain, that's the same continent. So then look at the continent results. What do they do in their continent? What do they do in their country? What results in a country is similar to events I can play in my country, okay? So look for athletes from the same continent so you can kind of match the stats and statistics of what you should be doing in your regions. That's gonna help you have a nice sporting kind of goal target to set. And academically, you can see the school results, what to set. Again, that's, that's the ideal scenario if you're lower than 15. If you're over the 15, you can still do that and you should do that, but you've also got to get realistic because if you're 16, 15 and you start doing that and you see, like for example, UCLA has an athlete from say China and they did from 12, 13, 14, they were like national champions and everyone on their team's like a national champion before 15 and you haven't won anything before 15, you can't go back and do it. So then you've got to get realistic and see, okay, if I'm going to continue, what did that athlete do 15 onwards? You're going to have to beat that result because that's the only way you're going to fast track your success. So if you don't beat it, look at programs you can see where you are beating those athletes because then that's gonna get you that higher scholarship. Otherwise, guys, your scholarship's gonna be low, you're gonna have to pay more out of pocket, and that's what we're not here for. We're here to help you increase that scholarship. So this is the, the kind of the formula to increasing your scholarship. Good sport results every single year, looking at those programs, what those athletes did, looking at the grade point averages necessary to qualify, and looking at the SATs. What is the SAT requirement of every program you're going to? Now the NCAA sets a minimum uh, grade point average, but every school has their own individual uh, SAT result you need to get as well. So like schools like Ivy Leagues, Stanford's, Dukes, will set it above a 1400 minimum, ideally a 1500. But schools like Florida State, Georgia, you're looking at like 1200, 1100, 1200 plus. So it's a bit easier, still not easy, but it's easier. So you need to be realistic with yourself and think about what have I done every single year up until this point? What are my grades like? And then you can make a plan of action. What do I need to work on? Do I need to keep playing in more events? Or is my event roster good? Do I need to work on my academics, right? So you can start building your plan based off your target schools. So do your research, build your plans year on year, and don't panic, okay? A lot of athletes who are older watching this, 17, 18, 20, you might be thinking, I'm screwed, what am I gonna do? You're not, you just gotta get realistic with where you're at. If you're, if you're 17, 19, and you didn't do much here, you're gonna to have to change your goals. But if you're 17, 19, and you have had a good history, a good performance history, but you have no coach's interest in you, you have a different problem because you might have the grades, you might have the sport results, you're just not getting interest. You're not telling the coaches who you are. You need to watch the college marketing, marketing section of this, of this uh, academy and learn about how to get the coach's attention because you actually have all the information give you a good commitment, you're just not being active in the marketing section of getting your, your scholarship out there. So again, use this formula to help you build a plan of action every year on year. Again, focus on sports, focus on academics, get those clearinghouse SATs done, and that's gonna help you get recruited sooner and sooner. Because some athletes actually commit at 15 or 14 years old, because they actually start even earlier. They started at eight, nine years old. So you want really, to summarize this, five years of good academic and sport history. That's gonna help you get recruited sooner. If you only have one or two years, it's gonna be much harder. Still doable, but you gotta change that target. We want you going to the best schools possible. We want you getting the best scholarships possible. So get on this as fast as possible. Build your plan so you can get that school you want. If you have comments, questions, please leave a comment below. We'd love to help you with all your questions and join into our weekly webinars if you're a member of the Scholarship Academy so we can answer your questions and work on your own individual plans. Take care, thanks for watching and look forward to seeing you next video. Bye-bye.